Hello, you're watching News Mongolia on MNB World, and I'm your host, Jarash Maat of For today's top stories, Mongolia's economy continues to pick up, but growth remains uneven. Pledge to Impact Gender Responsive Political Party Forum was organized. A cognitive competition I Mongolian was organized for children in the USA. For the news, stay tuned. Mongolia's economy is projected to grow by 5.8% in 2023 and 6.2% in 2024 as the mining sector expands, private consumption recovers and fiscal expansion stays strong. According to the latest World Bank report, on November 28, the World Bank introduced its semi-annual Mongolia economic update. In the first half of 2023, Mongolia's economy exhibited robust growth, primarily propelled by the mining sector. Early indicators suggest that this growth trend has persisted in the second half of the year. Nevertheless, growth has been markedly uneven, with the non-mining sector trailing behind underscoring the economy's heavy reliance on the mining sector and its heightened exposure to commodity prices cycles. In the medium term, economic growth is expected to accelerate, averaging about 6% in 2025 2026, driven by substantial increase in mineral production. As Ayotalros, 2023 mining production is anticipated to more than double by 2025. Yet, significant downside risks keep persisting. These risks encompass lower mineral exports prompted by slower than expected growth in China, as well as uncertainties on coal offtake agreements. Additional risks include inflationary pressures stemming from both further domestic fiscal expansion and heightened geopolitical tension in the Middle East, potentially resulting in higher oil prices. An analytical chapter that focuses on Mongolia's trade opportunities in digital services could help diversify the country's economy. Mongolia's strongest opportunities to bolster its digital services growth and trade are in software development, telecommunications and digital marketing. However, despite progress in telecommunications and internet penetration, considerable constraints remain in digital infrastructure, including slow network speeds, cybersecurity vulnerabilities, and a shortage of highly skilled professionals. The report emphasizes the need for fiscal moderation to mitigate inflationary pressures and enhance macroeconomic stability, thereby stimulating private sector investment and bolstering global market confidence. In addition, the report recommends improving social protection efficiency to safeguard household consumption without spurring renewed inflationary pressures. In the medium term, the report suggests rebuilding fiscal buffers to prepare for possible shocks and create space for future investments, including as part of the new recovery policy. To promote economic diversification through digital services, the report advises enhancing digital infrastructure and establishing initiatives to upgrade digital skills. On Wednesday, November 29, a national forum on Pledge to Impact, Gender Responsive Political Parties was organized at the Toshan Hotel. The forum was held as part of the project promoting gender equality in public decision-making and women's empowerment in Mongolia, implemented by the United Nations Development Program Mongolia with support from COICA. During the forum, political parties in Mongolia were called to continue their leadership, fulfill their pledges and follow up their promises with concrete actions. UNDP are very proud of this uh, engagement that we have with uh, great support from uh, COICA. Um, it is about um, uh, strengthening uh, part political participation of women and that is at the core of uh, the gender equality, one of the fundaments uh, of the human rights in fact. Um, not for uh, the sake only of being a human rights per se, but also for the sake of uh, making sure that the development in any country, and of course for Mongolia, is based on the um, e based on the not interests, but also is made together by uh, both genders, both uh, male and female. Um, so, uh, political uh, participation of women is an extremely important part of the gender equality and, um, in the world and um, in Mongolia we see that there is a lot of uh, room for improvement. Um, 
I wish to stress one important development uh, that was uh, that came immediately after the law on elections has been uh, amended to um, include this quota for women's participation. It has been extremely important that immediately after the 10 political parties of uh, uh, Mongolia made a pledge that they will uh, revise internal procedures, internal um, ways of uh, thinking and <coughs> nominating the candidates and supporting the candidates so that uh, 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 it complements the law and helps the law become reality. As the main stakeholder of representative democracy, political parties signed a pledge to support gender equality and women's engagement on April 23rd of 2023. Since then, political parties have demonstrated noticeable efforts in reducing barriers to gender equality at the decision-making level, initiating comprehensive interventions and taking effective steps aimed at being gender-responsible, human rights-focused, sensitive policy institutions. The forum featured panel discussions on the success and impacts of gender-responsive political parties and on the next steps to be taken where representatives from political parties such as the Democratic Party of Mongolia, the Hun Party and the Mongolian People's Party took part and shared their perspectives. <laughs> In Mongolia, political parties in collaboration with the United Nations, non-governmental organizations and civil societies have been implementing a joint project on promoting gender responsiveness in political parties. It's been two years and through this forum held today, we are evaluating the results so far of this project. As we know, gender equality is the fifth goal of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Political parties are pledging to promote gender equality at the decision-making level. We set a goal of women being at least 30% of candidates running for the 2024 parliamentary elections and maybe further extend that to 40% of candidates in the 2028 elections. Over 7,000 members and supporters from 17 political parties participated and benefited from 17 comprehensive actions aimed at fostering internal party democracy that promotes gender equality and equal representation of women women in politics and supporting female politicians. Mongolians in the United States commemorated the 99th anniversary of the adoption of Mongolia's first constitution, which proclaimed the independence of the Mongolian People's Republic. The celebration was under the slogan, Be the owner of your native language, be a citizen of your country. As part of these celebrations, there was an iMongolian cognitive competition organized among Mongolian children in the United States. Before participating in this Mongolian competition, children undergo online training jointly organized by Mongolian schools in the Washington, D.C. area. Throughout this course, they delve into the history and culture of Mongolia, expanding their knowledge about the country. This marks the starting point for their successful participation in the competition. When preparing to participate in this competition, children acquired knowledge about the history and culture of Mongolia. Additionally, they gained basic proficiency in writing in the Mongolian script. Moreover, I believe this competition is highly rewarding from cognitive perspective as it enables children to learn about Mongolian culture and traditions. I gained knowledge of Mongolia's past history. I also acquired knowledge about the 21 Mongolian Amaks or provinces. Over 50 children residing in the Washington, D.C. area were organized into nine teams and took part in this competition under the slogan, Be the owner of your native language, be a citizen of your country. They created a world newspaper with the theme of My Homeland, answered questions in the Who is Familiar with Mongolia competition, and showcased their talents through performances of Mongolian national songs and dances.
Particularly among teenagers, high school and middle school students, the heavy workload often deters attendance at Mongolian schools. In response to prevent the detachment of our children from their history and culture, we organize this competition. The primary goal is to remind them of the Mongolian language, encourage them to speak Mongolian, and, most importantly, foster an environment where children can learn from each other. The competition is a pivotal event contributing to the preservation of the Mongolian language and culture among Mongolian children residing abroad. In the light of this, the Embassy of Mongolia and the United States, the We Together Non-Governmental Organization, a Mongolian community of the Washington, D.C. area, Mongolian schools and business owners collaborated to jointly organize the significant event. Through participation in this competition, children are actively learning about their native land of Mongolia. They gain insights into customs, learn new cultures, and familiarize themselves with the cultural content. Our aim in organizing this competition extends beyond the immediate context, as we hope that Mongolians residing in various foreign countries, not just limited to the United States, will be inspired to establish this event as a tradition for their children. Our most precious possession is our country. Consequently, I believe it's the responsibility of Mongolians to support each other and collaborate in such events. If Mongolians aspire to strength through unity, it's essential to cooperate and provide support in all endeavors like this. On the anniversary day, Mongolian children in America came together, adorned in Mongolian traditional national costumes, known as Dil, honoring their traditions and providing an opportunity to take pride in being Mongolian. Next, our program will turn our attention to foreign news, partnered with international news agencies. The first commercial airliner to cross the Atlantic on a purely high-fat, low-emissions fuel flew Tuesday from London to New York in a step toward achieving what supporters called Jet Zero. The Virgin Atlantic Boeing 787 flight was powered without using fossil fuels, relying on so-called sustainable aviation fuel made up largely of tallow and other waste fats. Uh, well, today Flight 100 is flying from uh, London to New York on sustainable fuel, and that's a first and very exciting. The United Kingdom Transport Department, which provided £1 million to plan and operate the flight, called the test a huge step towards Jet Zero to make air travel more environmentally friendly, though large hurdles remain in making the fuel widely available. While governments have long talked about decarbonizing air travel, the transition has been moving at the pace of dirigible. Sustainable aviation fuel, which reduces greenhouse gas emissions by about 70%, is the best near-term way for the international aviation industry to achieve its net-zero target by 2050, the U.S. Energy Department said, though it called the goal aspirational. The U.S. Government Accountability Office said that while domestic production of the fuel had jumped from about 2 million gallons in 2016 to 15.8 million gallons in 2022, it accounted for less than 0.1% of the jet fuel used by major U.S. airlines. It was also a drop in the bucket compared to the goal of producing 1 billion gallons a year set in 2018 by the Federal Aviation Administration. The White House, meanwhile, set a goal two years ago to produce 3 billion gallons of sustainable aviation fuel per year by 2030 and 100% of domestic commercial jet fuel by 2050. The UK has set a goal that 10% of jet fuel will come from sustainable sources by 2030, while this is the first jetliner to make the transatlantic journey using only the sustainable fuel, it was not a commercial flight and not the first jet to do so. Gulfstream Aerospace was the first to make the crossing earlier this month with a business jet powered only by the ecofuel. Air France KLM flew from Paris to Montreal two years ago using a mix of petroleum-based jet fuel and a synthetic derived from waste cooking oils. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. 
We will see you tomorrow with more news and updates. Goodbye.